a beautiful day for flying, a beautiful night for flying, and a stellar Eagle Mania performance in Vermont in between. It's another episode of Life in the Fast Lane. Okay. I'm John Weiswasser, pilot and drummer for Eagle Mania. Follow me as I explore the practical use of general aviation while I travel the country with the world's greatest tribute to the Eagles. This is Life in the Fast Lane. This trip takes me from Caldwell, New Jersey to Bellows Falls, Vermont for an early Thursday evening show in September at the Bellows Falls Opera House. The schedule was fairly typical, a 4 p.m. sound check and then a 7 p.m. hit, although we were only playing for 90 minutes, which meant I could potentially return after the show. Four Flight's trip planner correctly suggested Dillon Hopkins Airport in Keene, New Hampshire, a nice-sized, uncontrolled field about a 30-minute drive from the venue as the best option. As I always do days before the event, I calculated the fail-safe time for a go-no-go -go decision based on the drive time. In this case, considering a flight to Keene with a four and a half hour drive to Bellows Falls, Vermont, and a 50 minute flight to Keene, I had to make a decision at no later than 11.30 a.m. Briefing the flight at 8 a.m. had Keene with some morning fog and low IFR, not altogether surprisingly, with the rest of the stations reporting VFR. The forecasted conditions for Teterboro and Pittsfield, Massachusetts, the closest reporting station to Keene, showed VFR all day and into the night with conditions deteriorating at 4 a.m. You could see graphically that it was going to be strictly VFR at both ends of the day. This was due to a large high pressure ridge that had parked itself over the east coast and the kind of weather pattern that makes September my favorite month for flying. Icing and turbulence were not an issue at all. What did catch my eye were a couple NOTAMs. One was for a change to the remote communications outlet frequency, which was important given that I would be departing IFR at night and I would want to get my clearance before getting airborne. The other was a revision to the obstacle departure procedure. This was critical given that I would be departing an uncontrolled airport nestled in the mountains at night. You could see on the terps for the ILS that there were multiple obstacles, including a nearby mountaintop at 3,000 feet. 99 Delta Alpha call will ground or uh, correction clearance clear to Echo Echo November Airport via after departure turn left to a heading of 180. Expect radar vectors breezy Victor 39. Yeah, soars. The clearance was pretty much routine and followed the four flight suggested routing, which is what I had filed. He ended up reading me the whole route even though I had been given it as expected, which I can't really figure out why they do that sometimes. Okay, uh, 929 Delta Alpha is cleared to Keene via on departure, left turn heading 180 radar vectors breezy, Victor 39 soars, juds, Weight, direct, 2,000, 17,000 at 10, 119 or 0.2, squawk on release, 9 Delta Alpha. The most critical part of starting a turbine is to monitor the temperatures and only introduce fuel when the gas section of the turbine has hit a predetermined percentage, in my case, 15%. Unlike a piston, the hottest moment for a turbine in a given flight is actually at the start. Okay, 750. That was our starting high temperature. Which is perfect. Clear for takeoff, 2-2, 9 Delta Alpha. Okay, we have 60 knots. Delta Alpha contact near departure, 119.2, safely. Departure, 9 Delta Alpha, so long. Your departure, good afternoon, ready at 99 Delta Alpha, is 1000, climbing 2000, turning left, 180. 99 Delta Alpha, your radar contact, maintain 6000. 6000, 9 Delta Alpha. American 1382, 9 Delta Alpha, proceed direct breezy. Direct breezy, 9 Delta Alpha. The rest of the climb and on-route portion were really unremarkable. So we were just descended down to 11,000 from 15,000. We weren't going to get our uh, request of 17,000, but that's okay. It's such a short flight. Meantime, 
Uh, as I said, the weather at uh, Key is uh, winds uh, very lightly out of the north, pretty much calm. Uh, 10, 10 miles of visibility, clear skies. And uh, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask for the um, RNAV to two again because of this area of um, this. There's this obstruction. It's in mountainous terrain. Now, what's great about foreflight is I can sit and look at this uh, three dimensionally. Uh, over the airport. Very nice. You can see that hill right here. Uh, this would be runway 2. And uh, when we look look at runway 20 going, going the other way, you can see it's relatively unobstructed. That's what I'm going to ask for. Uh, and so uh, since I'm going to ask for it, and I'm sure that's the runway that you're although uh, I'm not picking up an ATIS yet, I'm going to go ahead and load it. Boston Center, uh, good afternoon, uh, Jack Hart, Boston Center, Brittany and 929 Delta Alpha, it's with the 11,000, we have uh, weather and notams at Keene, and we'd like the RNAV to runway 2, Keene. Number 929 Delta Alpha, Boston Center, Roger. Keene Alpha, number 3031, number 929 Delta Alpha, cancel with me in the air, if you're unable to, uh, Boston Center flight data, I have a phone number when you're ready to copy. I'll go ahead for 9 Delta Alpha. Okay, there he goes. The real reason I wanted to get the phone number was so that I had someone to call that night to get a clearance by phone rather than having to go through the RCO. Never 9 Delta Alpha. Change of I-3 to be Okay, we'll call 9 Delta Alpha. 28-6-7-4-0. You can see that 3,000-foot mountaintop on the right. Center Bernie and 9 Delta Alpha can cancel right now. Number 929 Delta Alpha. Roger, can't push the deuce, well, VFR, have a good day. Okay, VFR, thanks for your help, 9 Delta. And, and let's drop here. Send me as a J-Fun 234, right? Boston, SMR 3033. Send me as a J-Fun 234, right? Engine 585. Yeah, we've got three green, and a ton of flaps, and, uh, might as well put the landing light on now. Okay, manual, manual, lights, one more notch of flaps to go. Gear is down three in the green, and uh, pressurization is down zero. Uh, November four, white. Okay, I am three miles out. I <laughs> have the runway made. Last notch of flaps going down. Keen traffic, Meridian is on a three mile straight in final runway to anyone in the pattern. Turn the autopilot off. Minimums. Minimums. And uh, one more check. Three green. All good. Full flaps. This is our first time into this particular venue. We played several theaters in Vermont and we usually draw well. This show was on a Thursday night, so we sold north of about 400 tickets, which isn't bad for a weeknight. The, uh, the village itself is a little over 3,000 people. The okay. town of Rockingham, uh -huh. which is actually uh, several villages incorporated, right. uh, is about 5,200 people. Okay. Built for the town uh, in the 1800s. Right. Uh, there was a fire burned down. Right. So in 1926, they rebuilt the town hall. Right. And added the theater to it. Okay. So uh, it's almost 100 years old. The show was the first of two in New England. We then played a big theater in Andover, Massachusetts, which will be the topic of the next episode. But suffice it to say, the band decided to stay in New England, whereas I decided I would return to New Jersey and then come back for the Andover show. It was a hard, hard run, right? It Five is. days for three hours of music. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. And Ohio was too. Yeah. And 
Yeah, it's tough, yeah. folks. <laughs> uh, major renovations were done to the theater about 12, uh -huh. 14 years ago mm -hmm. uh, to restore it to its uh, original uh, it. beautiful uh, intent. Right. And uh, that's when they added the, the fly system and, and uh, you know, uh, right. recreated that, the beautiful area that the band is going to be playing in tonight. That's great. Uh, less than half of our customers come from the Rockingham area. Oh wow! And in fact, uh, almost fifty percent of them are from uh, New Hampshire. Oh wow! When the schedule is tight like this, it adds a little bit of stress because none of us likes to play on a full stomach. Well, let's get the, hell, get the hell out of here. Yeah, I, mean, what I about gotta do my hair. Pretty. And I mean, look my at God, that. it's a mess. I mean, we, wow. thank, thank you. The way this band copes with the stress of traveling and playing is through humor, and there's an endless abyss of that with these guys. Krusty the Clown style. Doesn't like the belt, but she'll go for the hat. The hat, no problem. That's a country song right there. Yeah, right? But it's the belt that's bothering me. Really? I gave up trying to figure women out a long <laughs> time ago. Early show, Ken. But it's a Thursday night. It's a Thursday night show, yes. <clears throat> so it's good. Show. It is good. Better than anything else you'd be doing on Thursday night. Yes. Right. And I will say that you're the next best best person. Who's the first? I, Dennis, Dennis is the trendsetter. Dapper is. Right? It ended up being a great night with an enthusiastic crowd. Very good. Yes. Thank you very much, my friend. Thanks for coming to see Excellent job. Thank you. It's our third time with you guys. Where have you seen this before? Rutland twice. And you guys are coming back in March. Yes, we are actually. Okay. Thank you. As soon as I got off stage and finished the meet and greet, I started briefing. Unfortunately, the screenshots of some of this on my iPad didn't save, but I was able to pull what was missing from archive data. Basically, everything was severe VFR. I planned on a 9.30 p.m. departure with a one hour en route time, and the TAFs were no different. The SIP FIP and the turbulence forecast had absolutely nothing to offer. Nexrad and color infrared satellite were painting nothing. What did deserve extra attention was the ODP. Given that the winds were calm, I planned on using runway 20, which was more aligned with my direction of flight and required no maneuvering in mountainous terrain. The ODP called for a climb to 3000 direct to Keen VOR, which was six miles away. I climb at 125 knots, or roughly two miles a minute and a vertical speed of 1,300 feet per minute. That meant that I could expect to be at Keen VOR in three minutes and 3,900 feet, well within what was called for in the ODP. The NOTAM for the ODP didn't apply to runway 20. Using the Boston Center phone number that I got on the way in, I called and picked up my clearance, which had no surprises. I filed for lower, 10,000 feet actually, so that I can make use of the tower en route control routing rather than the higher center routing, which I knew would take me out to Albany and then south before turning east, probably adding an extra 30 minutes to an already short flight. Keen traffic. Uh Freddian is going to be departing uh, runway 20 Keen.
I had reviewed the ODP procedure for runway 20 very carefully before even starting the engine, which required a straight climb to Keen VOR, which was six miles away, to cross it at 3,000 feet. Boston Approach, or Boston Center, uh, Meridian 99, Delta Alpha 2.4, climbing uh, 5,000. So we're at 99, Delta Alpha, Boston Center, right of contact, 5, Delta Keen, climbing, maintain 10,000, Keen altimeter 3028. Okay, up to 10,000, 9, Delta Alpha. And 9, Delta Alpha, I do have a whole new reading to Caldwell, uh, advisory to coffee. Okay, uh, stand by one second. This was the first of three reroutes that I got for this short flight. Okay, go ahead for 9 Delta Alpha. 9 Delta Alpha, uh, uh, leaving 3,600. Clear direct to Gulf Delta Mike, Victor 229. To Hotel Foxtrot Delta, Victor 3. Charlie Mike Kilo, Victor 623 to Sierra Alpha X-ray, direct destination. Okay, 929 Delta Alpha, passing uh, 3,000, well, passing 3,600, direct to Golf Delta Mike, Victor 229, Hartford, Victor 3, Carmel, Victor 623, to Sparta, direct. Is that right for 9 Delta Alpha? 9 Delta Alpha, that is correct. Maintain 10,000. Okay, 10,000, okay, one and now uh, we'll go uh, direct to uh, Golf Delta Mike as soon as we can. Thank you. Yeah, with 3293. Okay, well, we're at uh, 10,000 feet, and uh, it's a beautiful night. I uh, see the moon, really gorgeous. Fair wings 109, come and maintain for level 230. That was a clumsy departure for me, just, um, it was clumsy, it felt rushed. Yeah, 16, 15, quarter, Syracuse. And, uh, and then once, as soon as we got in the air, they gave us yeah, that 16, reroute, 15, come and maintain for level which I don't think is going to change much change things too much, but, uh... Silver 9 Delta Alpha, contact Bradley approach, 119.0. 119.0, 9 Delta Alpha. Jeff 1615, contact Boston Center, 128.32. Bradley approach, uh, good evening, Bernie, 929 Delta Alpha, 10,000. November 929 Delta Alpha, Bradley approach, Bradley Alpha, 3027. 279 Delta Alpha. It uh, doesn't change things too much, uh, but uh, let's see. I'd love to get to Caldwell. Where they close. And uh, this has us there three minutes after they close. Oh, we'll see. Uh, we're still way out. Uh, we're still like near Bradley. You can see here for a long way away. Center, or correction, proceed and, direct um, to Veer. They just descended me at a 10 for 6,000. It says clearly uh, tower on route control, which is fine because okay. then I don't have to go west. Uh, but they already gave me um, a second reroute. So we've had two reroutes, and um, uh, and now we're being descended early. Nothing, no big surprise there. Caldwell Tower information, Victor, 0153 Zulu, wind calm is 410, sky clear, temperature 112.8, altimeter 3028, localizer 22 approach and use, flying around my 22 right traffic. So uh, it's clear and calm, and uh, I've already selected uh, RNAV to 22, uh, Caldwell. I'm advancing to when I got handed off to the Newark sector of New York approach. Remember, this is now 10.30 on a Thursday night. I'm sorry, Southwest 247, 190 heading to join the 22 left low class. 190 heading to join the 22 uh, left low class, Southwest 247. United 2252 heading Here I'm just waiting for a moment to check on. Cedar Road 1500 feet, restrict to below you. Okay, we'll look at the traffic, uh, 090, 2500 feet, United 2252. United 82 heavy, right turn 040, 6000. 040, 6000, thank you. Southwest 247, two from Tuscan, so it'll establish clear dial up to left, towers 18-3. 
Two established, cleared for the uh, ILS 22 left, southwest 18, uh, 247 over time. Thank you, 2252, reaching 2500. The guy was so busy that there was no space for me to check in. It reminded me of a scenario posted in pilot workshops in the IFR mastery section not long ago about technically being Nordo if you can't get a word in with a busy controller. 82 Heavy, departure 20.8. 20.8, can I? Jeff Louie, 28, send a 5,000. 5,000, Jeff Louie, 28. United 378, send a 4,000. 4,000, 378. Okay, the 584, 8.74, uh, 7,000, India. As this went on, my hopes for landing before the tower closed began to fade as I was following my routing, which took me to the west before going direct to the airport. I had hoped I could get direct to the initial approach fix from the controller. Finally, a minute and 45 seconds after being told to check in, he identified me and was able to get in my request. Okay, 9 Delta Alpha, any chance direct Dowdy for the RNF for 9 Delta Alpha? Dowdy, join the final approach course, send the 3000. Okay, 3000 Dowdy, 9 Delta Alpha. Thank you. 933, heading 340, 10,000. 340. 340, heading 10,000. Thanks for your help. Wake up. Three Victor Julius, send a 2,500. Three Victor, 150. Delta Alpha, send a 2,000. 2,000, 9 Delta Alpha. Yeah, 3,733, direct. This guy was a machine. New York controllers are the very best. Clear for the approach, 9 Delta Alpha. Thank you. 314, heading 040. 040, 9 Delta Alpha, at a 314. And Delta Alpha, the tower's closed. Report cancellation of IFR and the frequency on the ground via the 800 number. Okay, I cancel with you now, 9 Delta Alpha. Slash three squawk 1200, see you later. See ya, 9 Delta. We got 35, 85, send it to 1500, 190 heading, drone all five. Call tower, anyone home? And uh, call traffic, uh, Bridian is on a short final 22. You can see New York City in the distance. Okay, off the autopilot. At three green, full flaps. Minimums. Minimums. Here's what's next on Life in the Fast Lane. High pressure over the East Coast yields some great flying to the Boston area and a night return to Caldwell, as well as allows us yeah. to show you a little bit <coughs> on how it's done. Right here, right? It's his fault. Yeah. I want to thank the heads of the five families for making this meeting. It's another episode of Life in the Fast Lane.